Well, I've uh, started on day one. I've been walking for about half an hour now. I've decided uh, rather than try to start the videos right at the start of Ronnie Creek, where there are a lot of people going on day walks, I'd uh, try to get up a little bit further, clear the way and get out of everyone's way. Um, also helps me make videos and not be embarrassed as hell. Uh, I've stopped here at this nice little uh, waterfall. Uh, there was a, uh, another group doing a day walk just in front of me. I thought I might let them get a little bit ahead and I'd stop and take some photos, get some selfies and start making a video. Uh, so I caught the bus out of uh, Cradle Mountain this morning. Uh, we departed at about 9.30. Uh, got to Ronnie Creek and started walking. I believe it was around 10 o'clock. Um, yeah, I've been walking for about half an hour now. I started the day off wearing my coat and uh, waterproof pants. As you can see though, they've, uh, they've been put back in the pack because despite only half an hour of walking, I'm already sweating up a storm. Uh, it's uh, very cold here, there is snow around. Um, up on the mountains where I'm walking towards, there's a lot more snow to be seen. But it's just too hot for me to keep walking, wearing uh, all that stuff. Uh, the next update I'll do will likely be uh, Crater Lake. I'll stop there and uh, maybe have a quick nibble of something to eat, maybe some water. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you how we're going. And uh, here we are at Crater Lake. Stopping here for a, uh, a few minutes to catch my breath, maybe cool down a tiny bit. Uh, just finish off the coffee I had from the, uh, the visitor center. As you can uh, start to see, there is a bit of snow behind me. Uh, it is rather cool, but uh, I'm quite comfortable walking in uh, the clothes that I'm wearing. The walk so far hasn't been too bad. Uh, made use of the uh, the hiking poles. They've been uh, an absolute godsend on these uh, uphill parts. So uh, I'd like to thank Jackie for getting those for me for my birthday present. Uh, wouldn't like to think where I'd be uh, at the moment without those. I was thinking about having a uh, a quick dip in Crater Lake, but uh, given how much more I've got to how much more ground I've got to cover today, I might uh, give that one a skip and we'll save the, uh, the fun part until the very end of the trip. Um, not really much more to say. So far I'm enjoying the walk. I seem to have gotten away from the, uh, the groups and the uh, other hikers on the trails, which uh, makes it a lot more enjoyable for me. Uh, it also means I'll be able to make a lot more videos and stuff. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to use the selfie stick and actually get some footage of me hiking with the pack on. Um, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, I'm um, going to grab a quick bite to eat um, before I step off again. I'll uh, talk to you all very soon. Well, everyone, I've made it to the, uh, the kitchen hut emergency shelter. It's about 12.20 uh, and I'm uh, stopping for a quick lunch break. Uh, lunch today will be a, uh, a tuna mornay, uh, dehydrated myself. It is bloody cold. For about the last hour I've been in uh, snowshoes because this is what it looks like outside. It's been uh, fairly hard going. At the, uh, the top of Marion's Lookout, I was going to stop for a lunch break. Uh, it was just too exposed, way too cold. Yeah, I did stop to put on the, uh, the jacket, as that was the last of the real steep uphill parts. Uh, my clothes underneath were soaking wet. Um, I just had a few of them then, they're not too bad now. The, uh, the body heat underneath the insulated jacket has started to, uh, to dry stuff out. 
and uh, I will be wearing these later on tonight. I'll keep wearing them uh, throughout the night. I'll stop and put long sleeve thermals on and uh, layer up and uh, that will dry them out. Uh, equipment wise, everything's going well. Uh, pack weight hasn't been an issue for me. Uh, I did have to break out the Yowies though at one point today, which was a bit of fun. Never had to walk in those before. Um, certainly made life a lot easier. Again, the, uh, the poles, the walking poles, absolute godsend. I can't imagine trying to do this track uh, without them. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say at the moment. Uh, I'll jump outside soon and take some photos. Um, get some more video of uh, the outside of this little hut. It's an amazing little uh, shelter. Um, yeah, if you uh, got stuck up here in complete whiteout blizzard conditions, you'd be very comfortable in here for the night. Um, that being said, I'm not going to be staying here. I'm going to be uh, making my way down to Waterfall Valley Hut. Um, it's about three and a half kilometres on the track. Um, I'm anticipating having to do most of that in the snowshoes. Um, but that's where my stop point for the night will be. Good morning everyone. I've uh, set off on the second day, heading to Windermere Hut. In case you can't tell by looking around, it's snowing quite heavily. So the plan is to try to video as much of today's walk as I can. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to do much uh, recording or photos in the hut last night. I did have guests and uh, I may have mentioned a few times already but yeah I get a little bit embarrassed. It's one of those things but I'll try to make up for it a bit today. Uh, we can already see that there's snow and stuff falling on the lens of the GoPro which is making the footage a little bit hard to see. I'll uh, wipe that off shortly and get back to you. But yeah so far Loving my uh, my adventure, loving this uh, this part of the world. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. I've just found a nice little spot to have a, uh, a quick break. It's nice and sheltered from the blasting wind that's been hitting me for the last hour. And the uh, relentless snow combined with that wind, the wind chills dropped it down to about minus five. Uh, been parts where I've completely lost the track. Uh, had to stop, look around and try to find the markers, the boardwalk was just completely under snow. The parts without the boardwalk, just impossible. Uh, just aimed at the next post and kept going. But I'm doing all right. I've passed uh, Wheel Lake. Unfortunately, it's just too cold today. I can't, uh, can't bring myself to go down there. Um, all the views would have been obscured anyway. There's just nothing to see. It's just white. Everywhere you look, it's just white out. It's amazing, it's incredible, but by God, it's cold. It's really cold. Being out by yourself today in this, it's a, uh, it's a real test. It's, um, you gotta keep telling yourself uh, just to keep going, just to push on a bit further, just over the next rise, just over the next steps, just to that next pole. It's just been a real struggle. It's been a real challenge. Thoroughly enjoying it, don't get me wrong, but it's been hard work and it's cold. It's really cold. I am looking so forward to getting to that next hut and getting changed back into some dry, warm clothes and getting a nice soup into my belly. All right, I'm gonna sit here for a few more minutes and uh, catch my breath. I wait until I start shivering that'll be my cue to start walking again. All right, I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the trip so far. I know I certainly am. I'll talk to you all soon. Well, 
here we are at the Windermere hut. Um, I finally made it here. Uh, took me about three and a half hours of hiking today. It was only uh, 7.8 kilometers, but as I've mentioned, it was fairly hard going. It was very cold. Uh, it's not much better inside the hut, tell you the truth. It's a balmy five degrees in there, and the, uh, the gas heater is unfortunately out of gas. But not complaining, I'm out of the wind, out of the snow, and I'm in dry clothes. So let's go and have a little tour of the hut, shall we? As we can see, it's a fairly spacious dining area. I've uh, already made a bit of a mess on the floor, but it's only snow, it'll dry up. I've already had some soup and a coffee. And I've got all my stuff over on the uh, the counter there. As mentioned, the gas heater doesn't actually work. I've hung all my stuff out to uh, to drip out. As for the inner layers, those ones right there, I'm going to try an old army trick tonight. I'm going to uh, put them underneath my sleeping bag between my uh, sleeping mat and sleeping bag. Try to let the body heat uh, dry them out. We're in the sleeping area now. A um, couple of bunks. Uh, this is where I'll be staying tonight. Uh, I was going to sleep outside. Uh, didn't end up doing it last night. And I'm not going to do it again tonight. I'm the only one here. So I'm going to enjoy uh, a night inside. I'm sure at some point I'll, uh, I'll get out and spend a night in the tent. It's uh, on my to-do list, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I'm going to make another video shortly about the gear and how it's holding up and what's working and what's not. There are a few things that are starting to annoy me and bug me a little bit, but you win some, you lose some. Uh, lessons learned, I'll remember it for next time. Just another thing is that... Um, the track so far has been absolutely stunning. It's been beautiful. I've loved every minute of it. Um, I'll definitely do it again in winter. Uh, but for anyone watching, if you uh, don't like the cold, don't like being wet, don't like having wet shoes, and don't like carrying a fair bit of uh, weight, I wouldn't recommend trying this in the winter. That being said, even in the summer, um, I've been reading through some of the journals that people have written about their stays and even in November and December people are still saying that there is snow and it's been cold and they've been caught in blizzard conditions. So it just goes to show that uh, Tasmania can uh, really surprise you. You can have all kinds of weather. We'll just go back outside again and have another little look around. So each hut does provide you with uh, water. It's uh, captured water from the rain tanks there. Um, all good to use. It recommends boiling it, but uh, I haven't bothered yet and I'm not throwing up, so I dare say uh, it's safe to drink. But yeah, this is uh, the conditions that I've been walking through for most of the day, and as you can see, just on the track there, just outside the hut, the snowfall has been quite heavy. Um, tomorrow is a 16.8 kilometre day. So I dare say I'll be uh, having a nice early start. I'm going to check the weather forecast on the Garmin E-Trex uh, shortly. See what that's uh, got in store for me. Hopefully no more snowfalls and hopefully uh, a bit less wind because the gear it really isn't going to dry tonight. The inner layers should do, um, but there's no way in hell that I'll be uh, wearing the stuff that I'm wearing right now, my dry clothes, uh, for the hike. Better to get back into the wet stuff and just start walking, just suck it up and get on with the job. Okay, as promised, we're going to talk about some of the gear that I've got with me right now. Uh, so I've got four items that we're gonna have a quick chat about right now and uh, I'm going to discuss how I found them so far. So the first one, 
bit of a strange one to do a review on is the uh, the Cedar Summit uh, Aeros pillow. It's not a bad little uh, pillow. I've used a lot of different camp pillows over the years, but this one here is by far the smallest I've found. It's a uh, just a quick little one you blow up yourself. It's got a one-way one -way valve on it. And uh, I had a surprisingly fantastic night's sleep using this little pillow last night. It's um, rather comfortable. I just tucked it into the, uh, the headrest of my sleeping bag. And I can't say much, uh, much more good things about it. Um, it's light, compacts down to a tiny little size gets rolled up in my sleeping bag in the dry sack, as we've already seen, and uh, surprisingly comfortable. It's not a very, it's got the nice um, pillowy feel to it. A lot of the, uh, the camp pillows you use, you have a very plasticky feel and your head actually gets cold when you're sitting on them or laying on them. Whereas I didn't find that with this at all. This was uh, brilliant, brilliantly comfortable. So uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the camp pillow, the Cedar Summit, um, Aero's Pillow, the uh, premium regular. Uh, I got this one at Anaconda. Uh, didn't cost much, nice and cheap, nice and light, and extremely comfortable. Couldn't uh, recommend it highly enough. Next, we're gonna talk about the uh, my birthday present from Jackie. Um, these are the, uh, the Lecky Journey Poles. A um, really good set of hiking poles made in the, uh, the Czech Republic. Fully adjustable for length. They've got the uh, the nice, easy, and secure clip outs, which allows you to adjust the length of the pole up or down. The top and bottom. They've also got these little uh, wheels here so that uh, you can, it's a bit hard to do with my gloves on, but you can actually uh, spin them to tighten them up if you found that, find that the poles are actually slipping a little bit, which I did find on the first day. That one's tight enough about as hard as it's ever going to go. And that one is too. I've really tightened those ones so they're not going to slip. But yeah, the first day I found they, they were slipping a little bit. Once I tightened them up, they were absolutely fantastic. This is the first trip I've ever walked using poles. Um, day one, going through the, uh, the thick snow. Uh, I was plunging those into the snow to actually test the depth. And at one point the snow was coming up to there. That's how deep some of the snow was. And I still wasn't really touching the ground. I was just got sick of jamming them in there. But I found on some of the steeper parts, it was good to jam the pole in and actually leave myself up using the pole. Um, also very good to stabilize yourself left and right if you start to fall. Um, walking up hills, I found to uh, adjust the mat a little bit uh, higher and use your, use your arms and actually help push yourself up those steps. It certainly made uh, life a lot easier with some of those steps on the first day. Uh, day two, most of the walk was actually board walk. Um, admittedly, it was snowed under and I couldn't really see it, uh, but I didn't really use the poles all that much. Um, coming down some of the rivers and uh, steep steps, I was certainly using them there. But most of the walk, again, board walk and very, very narrow board walk, there wasn't really much of a use for them. Still, this is by far, um, the most used piece of equipment I've had on this trip so far. And it has been, well, they have been incredible. They have literally made this trip so much easier. I can't imagine trying to do this walk without a set of poles, even just one. They do make life a lot easier. Like I said this is the first time I've ever walked with poles and I'll never do a polar trip ever again. The 
The next is the uh, the Garmin E-Reach Explorer Plus. This is the uh, the PLB slash GPS that I hired from Aspire in Launceston. Now uh, they've done me a fantastic uh, deal. Um, I won't go into too many details on that one, but this here has uh, been fantastic. It allows me to send uh, text messages, so I can let my uh, my parents and uh, friends know that I am safe. Um, it also pings our location to them once I send the message. There are many other options you can set up with this. You can set it up so it will ping to them every 30 minutes and let, let them know where you're at. I've disabled that feature, I don't really want that. Um, it does suck the battery life out of it. The maps are very accurate. Um, it's already got, it's got the Overland Track program onto it and I found that um, it's accurate um, plus or minus about two meters, which is uh, pretty fantastic. Uh, it's also got the, uh, you can pull the weather data down and actually check what the, uh, the day is going to have in store for you. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to get up to a nice balmy seven degrees around midday, which will be good considering I've got a very long walk ahead of me. Um, it shows clear skies, which will be fantastic. I'm a little bit over walking in the snow and the uh, howling winds. So we'll see how that uh, goes and see how accurate the weather data is. Um, that being said, today's uh, reading was very accurate. Um, hence my reason, my decision to leave Waterfall Valley Hut a lot earlier than I had planned. I still got caught in the, uh, the worst of it, but I was a lot closer to, uh, to Windermere Hut when that hit. Um, I was able to find some fairly sheltered parts to get out of the wind for a few minutes and have a bit of a, uh, a regather. Um, yeah, uh, PLB wise, there's a little cover, it's actually a little bit hard to get off. Press that button there and it will send um, the distress signal to anyone who you've got registered on a uh, on an app um, so for this one here it will send a message to my parents it'll send a message to aspire and it'll also send the message to search and rescue the other really cool feature about it is is you can actually text back and forth with search and rescue and you can let them know things like i've sprained my ankle i'm okay to stay a couple of days but i can't walk out myself and that'll save them you know going into panic stations and sending search and rescue helicopters, they can find out exactly where you are, what your condition is, and uh, they can respond appropriately. So anyone going on a, a major walk, um, if you can't afford to go and buy an EPIRB or a, uh, a SAT phone or any of those things, go and check out your local uh, adventure company and ask if they've got the Garmin E-Reach, InReach Explorers, because uh, Absolutely incredible piece of kit. Um, I've used the map feature quite a number of times just today when I lost the track. And yeah, um, brilliant, uh, brilliant thing. The last one I'm gonna talk about is a mixed review of positive and negative. So here I've got my Mac pack, uh, waterproof coat. I'm touching the inside layers of it right now and there is moisture all over my hands. It has a 15,000 milliliter per hour waterproof rating. Um, when I first got this coat, I actually went and put it on and stood in the shower with the t-shirt on underneath and the t-shirt stayed dry. Yesterday, um, when I put it on, I was uh, copping a lot of rain and a lot of snow and sleet all day and the outside was soaked. The clothes on the inside remained uh, dry. Today on the other hand, um, a little bit of a different story. Uh, I wouldn't say the inside clothes were wet soaked, but they were very damp. Um, I think that uh, it might have just met its, uh, its rating for this one. So my suggestion would be if you're going to do any kind of walks in the snow or anything like uh, what I'm doing today, this week, 
This is fairly light. It's very comfortable. It's got uh, nice big pockets on the insides of it. Um, it doesn't have anywhere for you to put your hands, which is something I don't like. Um, but I would strongly recommend um, perhaps using this as a second layer and having something else over the top again, or wearing a shell layer on the inside is something with a bit of um, with an extra water resistant uh, capability. Um, that or go and buy a six hundred dollar coat that has that is definitely going to get you through these kinds of conditions. Um, not a negative review of this coat. I mean, I do like it. Um, I don't really like the material cuffs in there, which are soaked and wet. But overall, it's a good coat and it's doing the job. It, it has been keeping the wind off me, but it is wet. The inside of it is damp and I imagine it's probably going to stay that way for the next five days. So there we have it. Four pieces of equipment that I've had a look at. Um, mixed reviews, mostly all good. One on the fence. So it's not a bad coat, it's just probably not enough for these conditions. Um, yeah, I would uh, recommend that you go and check with your local outdoor groups um, the waterproof rating um, and work out what the actually what rating you're going to need in order to come up and work in the snow because 15,000 milliliter per hour unfortunately just isn't cutting it. Okay, well that's the uh, the first equipment review done. I do hope to do more of these. Um, I would like to review uh, my pack. I've got some mixed reviews about that bad boy. Um, I'm hoping to get the tent set up at some point and spend a night in it while I'm out here. I've slept in it before, um, but I'd like to have the tent set up and record the setup so you can see how easy it is to, to put together. And then we can discuss um, that one. Uh, I'd also like to go in and discuss some of the dehydrated meals that I made. And anything else that I can think of that, uh, that warrants a review. All right, so uh, I don't know how well this is going to work. I've just got the, uh, the GoPro strapped onto my pack strap. Looking forward, so hopefully everyone can see what I'm seeing. So it's about 8.30. I've just stepped off from Windermere Hut. Uh, temperature is about zero. The water pipes at the hut were completely frozen, so I had to uh, boil some snow up today in order to have a coffee. But that's all right. Um, what else? Oh, that's right. Last night, uh, I was able to dry off my inner layers. So that's my uh, hike pants, hike shirt, and the thermal on the inside. Um, I was able to dry that off by doing exactly what I said, putting them between the, uh, the mattress and the sleeping bag. One slight problem though. I, uh, I put a hole in the sleeping mat. It turns out when I've rolled over or something during the night, I've pushed a bit too hard on one of the zips. So the zip's gone straight through the sleeping mat, so. For the next five nights, um, while well, I'll still be able to use the sleeping mat, I just won't be able to inflate it. So it'll still provide a little bit of insulation. It's just, it's just really not the most comfortable of uh, of sleeps. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. This is quite slippery coming down here, especially seeing as I'm holding the poles compacted up, not using them just yet. The path's way too narrow. You'd never be able to get a uh, a really good um, stride going. So yeah, I um I managed to largely dry my clothes. They were still a tiny bit damp, and they were very cold. I may have uh, shrieked a little bit this morning when I put them on, but. 
I'm in them now and I've got the coat and uh, waterproof overpants rolled up in the pack, not being used. Absolutely no need for them today. It's a reasonably clear sky. I've seen the sun for the first time in the last three days, which I'm really happy about. Um, so yeah, nothing falling from the sky yet. Touch wood, I'm walking on a boardwalk, that counts, surely. Um, so, although nothing will dry while I'm walking out today, um, it's more comfortable not having to wear it while I'm walking. I'm able to stride out just that little bit further. Um, stops me from heating up so much, which is good. And yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, today's walk is a big one. It's 16.8 uh, kilometers going from Windermere to New Pelion Hut. Um, should take me anywhere between I'm envisaging six and seven and a half hours. That's calculating in a few rest stops and my general unfitness. Um, otherwise, everything on the trip so far is going really well. I've got no real complaints. Um, I've treated a blister that's about the size of Western Australia on my left um, little toe. Uh, wasn't a big fan of putting the cold stuff on this morning and I have switched to the second pair of socks for today. I just couldn't bring myself to, uh, to put the soaking wet bad boys on this morning. I'm willing to go with a lot of discomfort, but uh, you've got to ration it out. Um, I've been told that the heater at New Pelion does work. Again, it's like all the others. It only heats up to 10 degrees before it turns off, but just keep resetting it and stuff will eventually dry. Um, I proved that on the first night. So yeah, I might uh, switch off for a bit, concentrate a bit on walking, try to get a bit of a stride happening. And at least while I've got the clear part of the day and this nice, barely visible boardwalk to walk along, try to get some kilometers up. All right, I'll uh, talk to you all soon. Bye for now. This, uh, this track just keeps going up and uh, look at that monster. Yeah, don't think I'll be doing that. But anyway, I thought I'd uh, turn the camera back on for a bit, continue the walk and uh, I don't know, I might talk, I might just shut up and play some music with this bit. Uh, haven't decided yet, um, my editing skills aren't that fantastic, but yeah, I don't know, we'll see what happens, but uh, the views, oh my goodness they're stunning, I mean that is just a thing of beauty, I would love to climb that, I would love to have a crack at going up that, but uh, I really don't think that's on the cards. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that is Mount Ossa. And uh, if it is, that's the highest peak in Tasmania. And it's definitely on my list. Um, I'd have to get back to you and uh, confirm if it is or isn't. Um, yeah, I really don't know. Uh, I know I should be able to see Ossa today. Um, and if I was going to be able to climb it, then it would be tomorrow's uh, journey. But given the snow, given the conditions, I just don't think that's going to happen. I mean, it's a beautiful day out here today, and look up there, it just looks nasty. I would hate to get uh, partway up that and get stuck. Plus, I don't think that's the kind of uh, trip I'd be able to take my full pack on. I reckon that'd be a, a day bag job. And if something went wrong and you were stuck with nothing but the, uh, the gear you've taken with you in your day bag on something like that, waiting for search and rescue, oh boy, that would be uncomfortable and that would be cold. So uh, I think I might give it a skip. That being said, tomorrow is another day. And uh, who knows, maybe putting on a set of dry 
warm clothes in the morning rather than cold, slightly damp clothes, might just give me that morale boost I need to go, hey, you know what? We're doing this. The original trip, um, our journey plan, I had planned to do Mount Otter, um, including a camp out overnight there. Uh, after speaking to a couple of experienced bushwalkers on night one uh, at Waterfall Valley Hut, um, they've suggested to make it a day trip, go up, come back down. Um, and yeah, they've highly recommended against camping up there during winter. They also said that people have done it, um, but that they wouldn't. So that's just something for me to take on board. Uh, they were both also blown away by the fact that I'm, this is my first major bush walk in Tasmania and I'm solo walking the overland track in winter. Um, they thought that it might've been a bit too ambitious but once they heard a little bit about my background, they, uh, they calmed down a bit and realised that uh, I should be okay. I mean, I've got no doubts that I'll be alright. I know that by the end of today, I'm going to be tired and exhausted. 16.8 um, kilometres. Well, back in my heydays, that wouldn't have been a big endeavour. Um, I'm a lot older. A lot slower and a lot less fit these days. Um, so 16.8 kilometres in one day carrying what's got to be now probably around a 20 kilo backpack. Um, yeah, I'm going to be feeling it. I can promise you that. So the the seal skin socks have been retired for the uh, the day. There's no point putting them on when they're already soaked. So I'm using uh, one of my three sets of spare socks today. Um, probably been walking for, actually let's find out how long I have been walking for. Oh, you son of a thing doesn't even tell you. Well, anyway, I have been walking for less than an hour because it's not 10 past 9 and I know I didn't start walking until about 8.30. So maybe 40 minutes of walking so far. Um, socks are already wet. It's a fact of life. It is what it is. Just going to have to deal with it. Um, so about today's walk. Today's walk is a little bit down and up. Um, there is quite a large descent, a gradual descent, into the lowest part of the overland track. Um, I forget the name, Frog, uh, Frog Pond Valley or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Get back to you. Um, and then it's a bit of a climb back up. Um, I think we head back up about above the 1,000 metre mark. Uh, where we'll stay at uh, New Pelion Hut. Um, should also be able to go and have a look at the the old Pelion Hut, which is now an emergency shelter. So that would be good. Wouldn't mind having a look at that. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how we go.